Welcome to Vail, one of the most elite ski destinations in the world. Ever since this small Colorado mountain town was founded in the 1960s, it's been a playground for the rich and famous. Only 5,000 residents live here full time, but one and a half million tourists pass through every year. The streets here are heated for the winter and lined with luxury hotels, shops, and fine dining restaurants. The average home here costs $3 million. But Vail's also always been a place to land for a stream of self-described ski bums, chasing proximity to these incredible mountains. These days, it's getting harder and harder for them to find anywhere to call home. Nikki Otaki and Rocco Guerrera dreamed of living in Vail this winter. But this rest stop, about 20 minutes away, is as close as they're going to get. What were your housing options? What were you looking at? We wanted to get an apartment and just sell because, like, she works from home, but there was just, like, no options. The problem is it's, like, one thing will pop up, like, maybe, like, once every three weeks, and then it's, like, it goes like that, and you're on, like, you're, like, one of 500 people who are. There was one couple that we talked to that had... They put it up for two days and they had over 400 applicants. Whoa. And it was like they had like finished part of their garage. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone will pretty much take anything. Every morning, the couple drives to a bus stop so Guerrera can commute to his job selling backpacks and other outdoorsy gear at a trendy clothing store in town, while Otaki works remotely from the van. They say they'd be willing to spend up to $2,200 a month on a rental, but they can't even find that. The people who have houses here only come here for like a week, and it's just like, I don't understand how the town functions. That's why I don't think we'll come back to Vail again next year. Yeah, probably just go wherever has the housing. Housing's always been tight here, but the past few years have kicked the problem into overdrive. The pandemic caused a boom in sales, which drove up prices and drove down the number of available homes, while short-term rentals took a lot of options off the market. A recent study estimated the area is short 4,500 housing units. I had eight people after the summer just leave the valley. Why did they leave? Their rent was hiked 25 percent. They just couldn't afford to stay. Why would they bother? Katie Ryan Dorgan is the general manager at one of the best-known restaurants in Vail. Like many employers in town, she's struggled to find workers in this housing crisis. We have hundreds of applicants especially for the winter season. I have a generic response that I send to them that says, we are only considering applicants that have secured housing in the Valley. And from that group, we may see four or five people. Of so you get hundreds. hundreds of people who want to apply hundreds, for these jobs. Hundreds of qualified people. Very few actually are able to move out here and get out here. So we're out on Vail Mountain at Vail Resorts, which is one of the most beautiful places in the world, but it's almost impossible to live here if you're not a bazillionaire. So Vail Resorts has a proposed housing project to add some more affordable housing, but it's really controversial in the town and not everyone wants it. Vail Resorts is the biggest employer in town. It has housing for some of its thousands of staffers, but not all. The company's proposed development would house 165 employees on a strip of land called Booth Heights. The town council signed off back in 2019, but the plan hit a snag. The land is home to a beloved local herd of over 100 bighorn sheep. So they'll hang out right in here. Oh, I see them, they're right in there. Yeah. They live specifically in this spot because it has these cliff bands right above us and uh, the south facing exposure. So this is the only place these sheep can live. If we put a big employee housing project here, these sheep can't just go find an alternative spot to spend the winter. Trey Milhone is a local conservationist. He might care about these sheep more than anyone else in town. Vail Resorts has said that if they were to put housing here, it wouldn't have any environmental impact. What do you think about that? I think that's, that's a bald-faced lie. All of the true sheep experts and sheep biologists including Colorado Parks and Wildlife, have said that um, it'd be devastating to the sheep herd if they put a development in. So what happens? Like when construction starts, do they just They'll leave. leave and then they can't survive somewhere else? Right. They'll die. What have the conversations been like about the proposed housing and protecting this herd of sheep? Uh, a lot of people um, consider folks that are 
uh, against this housing development NIMBYs. Um, and, uh, you know, there, there probably are a, a handful of NIMBYs that, that don't want to see this housing development out here. But I really only care about these sheep. Do you trust Vale Resorts? Absolutely not. Vale Resorts has uh, proven time and time again that um, this community really doesn't matter to them. Um, you know, they're only out for profits. Vale Resorts did put forward an environmental impact report that says the project won't hurt the sheep. But state biologists agree with Milhone that if the herd loses this land, it, quote, simply won't exist. The debate has taken center stage at a number of testy town council meetings. If I was a bighorn sheep, uh, I would probably address you something like, um, you know, thank you for helping us with this issue. What I saw was not about the sheep. It was about generational class warfare. Moves to block this project are simply examples of NIMBY. The current theme for Booth Heights supporters is the constant refrain of NIMBYism and class warfare. What a crock. I never thought I would agree with Vale Resorts on anything, really. Uh, but let them build housing on that land. The town has tried to get Vale Resorts to build anywhere else. They've offered other locations and even tried to buy the Booth Heights site for $12 million. Vale Resorts said no. So in the fall, the town voted to condemn the land, to seize it back via eminent domain. Vale Resorts is fighting that in court, and the project remains in limbo. Some of the development's most active opponents would be its neighbors, like Debbie King Ford, who's lived in Vale for the last 40 years. The Vale I fell in love with was a small community. It was very cohesive. We were all here for the same reasons, which was primarily to ski and to enjoy the environment and try to make some money to live. So Vale Resorts announces this plan to build this housing. You hear about it. What's your reaction? Um, the reaction was anger because I was just shocked that they would be so insensitive as to think that they could build housing in the primary sheep habitat. In all honesty, I can say if the sheep were not there, I would not have a problem with the housing development there. However, having said that, I do not think that the Booth Heights development is an appropriate housing development for that site. You know, when you go to these meetings, I think some people have said the sheep are kind of just being used as a cover, that it's not really about the sheep, that it's about the house. I disagree 100%. I and my husband are both very pro-affordable housing, but we're more pro-sheep, and building on sheep habitat is not appropriate. It sounds a little bit like you're saying that this housing is great as long as it's somewhere else. Is there an element of this debate that hinges on nimbyism on, on that term? I don't believe this is a nimby issue at all. I know what nimbyism is, and I've been, I've seen a lot of that in this valley, but this one and everyone that's fighting this is definitely not nimby. It's for the sheep. It's not nimby at all. Why do you think Vale Resorts is pushing so hard for this plot? I have no idea. The only thing I can think of is that they are bullies and they wanna win a fight. What do you think the solution is if it's not Booth Heights? I think the town is finding some great solutions with finding affordable housing, whether it's housing to rezone, rebuild. I'm pro-affordable housing, but it needs to be in the appropriate places. One proposed solution was this site, which will be 72 new affordable housing units when it's finished this fall. The town offered to let Vale Resorts lease or buy the property, but the company turned them down. The town of Vale is really trying to find a way to build housing for our local workforce, take care of our people, and to protect the natural environment. My understanding is that Vale Resorts has been pretty stubborn about that land at Booth Heights that there's been a lot of back and forth of trying to get them to pursue a different option and that hasn't come to pass yet. Can you describe that conversation, that relationship so far to date? I'll, I'll leave it up to them to describe to you. Why do you think they're so set on that spot? Um, again, I think I'll leave that up to them to describe to you. Do you ever feel scared of Vail Resorts about you know how much influence they have and that there's maybe not that much ability to push back against them? You know, I guess I have moments of being scared, but what I have to do is trust in myself um, and believe that I'm doing the right thing. What are the alternatives to Booth Heights? Like, if they can't develop there, what are the alternative sites? Are there alternatives? We've got alternative sites. It's a, it's a tough topic for you to talk about. Right now, it's really tough to talk about. You know, we're in active negotiations, and we really, really, really hope that something will come to fruition here. Vail Resorts and the town are currently in mediation, and the week of our interviews, they asked the judge to order both sides not to publicly discuss the negotiations, making our conversations a little awkward. We need employees. We're delivering an experience, and that takes people. 
And if we are limited by housing in order to uh, fill our full rosters, to have a full schedule to deliver that experience, that's what's difficult because we know what we want to do and we can't do it without employees. One project that we know is, you know, has been a little controversial in town is the Booth Heights project. Um, can you talk a little bit about why that would be important? I think uh, every project that's going on in this community right now is important. And uh, I think that collaboration of all of us coming together to help solve is, is what has to happen. Why not pursue a different option, you know, if that's going to be so contentious with the community here? I mean, we're open to any and all options. Yep. Um, just, I, I can't really... Okay. Yeah. okay. During our interview, a press person for Vail Resort stepped in to make sure we didn't talk about the project. Yeah. So, yeah, so I won't speak specifically to that, but I can talk to all the projects are awesome. And um, The two sides now have until May to agree on a solution, or a judge will step in. We should be working as a group to find solutions for this, and right now everyone's fighting about it, and the fight just prevents us from coming to any kind of solution whatsoever. I don't really care who wins with this argument. I just want there to be housing here. It's not just my staff that's tired, it's the staff at the restaurant next door, and it's the staff at the pizza place, and it's the staff at the spas. It's this, everyone's tired, and it runs down a community. Yeah, what'll happen if nothing changes? Seems kind of like a slow death. The reality is we are so intertwined as a community. Vail Resorts is huge there. The whole company is named after this town and this mountain. If they fail, we fail. I'm Michael Learmonth, Editor-in-Chief of Vice News. Too often, traditional news outlets shy away from the real stories and experiences of those living through global conflicts, not Vice News. Our reporters are on the ground, fearlessly covering the human stories that shape our world. You and millions of others can continue to read, watch, and listen to Vice News for free. But we hope you'll consider making a one-time or ongoing contribution of any size at vice.com slash contribute. Every contribution, no matter how big or small, helps support the journalism Vice News brings to you every day. Thank you.